Whether it's to build a passive income or to escape the nine to five rat race, more and more people across the UK are turning to property investing and development as a way of making money work for them, not for them working for money. It sounds easy, but property is not a game for the faint-hearted, with hundreds of thousands, if not millions of pounds at stake. The rewards can be great, but if it goes wrong, it can go very, very wrong. You often need financial experience and knowledge to take that deal over the line. And that's where we come in. In this series, we give budding property developers the chance to pitch their deals to our five seasoned property professionals. John Howard, Helen Chorley, Paul Mahoney, Nicholas Woolwork and Ranjan Bhattacharya, or who we call our property investment angels. Our contestants are in with the chance to walk away with the backing of someone who will bring both finance and experience to the deal. Will our angels be sending them up to the penthouse or will they be heading straight for the basement? I'm Elizabeth Warburton and you're watching Property Elevator. Welcome to the second episode of Property Elevator. We had some fantastic deals come through yesterday and a lot of happy faces. Let's see what happens in today's episode. If it goes wrong, the market drops a little bit or whatever, we, you and I are gonna be underwater. You're not gonna have anywhere to live because I'm gonna take that off you. I operate by a simple postcode theory where if it, if it has a, a two letters and a one, then that's the centre of town, wherever it is. I've got stuff that I was told was going to be <laughs> was going to be done in kind of 12, 18 months, four years on. Yeah, still, anyway. Just this particular project, the way it's set up, the margin just isn't good enough. I think you're highly investable. I think you're going to go on and do great things in property on, off your own back rather than working for someone else. Hi, Masood. Welcome to Property Elevator. Hi, Lizzie. How are you doing? I'm doing great, thanks. Can you tell us a little bit about the deal and what you're after today from our angels? It's a three bedroom, semi-detached house over in West London. Mm -hmm. I'm looking to just add another bedroom and another bathroom, fully renovate the property as it's in a sort of distressed uh, condition at the moment. Okay. Hopefully looking to flip it or sell it on for profit uh, following the completion of the project. How much investment are you looking for today? 410,000. Looking for 100% of the financing uh, of the build costs and the purchase, hold and sale costs uh, with a profit split at the end. Well, good luck. Thank you. Let me know how you get on at the end. Cheers, Liz. Masood is coming in now. He would like us to invest in a semi-detached derelict property. Shall we find out what the story is? Welcome. Thank you very much for coming today. Could you please Say a bit about yourself, your experience, and what the deal is you wish us to fund today. My name is Masood. I'm a physiotherapist, and today I'm here to seek 100% financing for a project. It's a three bedroom, uh, semi detached property over in West London. Um, gross of them value is around about 510,000, uh, with a profit margin uh, estimating around 100 gross profit around 100,000. Outside of my job, I run Facebook advertising campaigns for clients. Um, it's a business that I started outside of my job. So it's like generating leads for small to medium sized businesses. I've just completed my first refurbishment project. It was a two bedroom mid terrace house in Liverpool. It was on the market last year in October 2019. Uh, on the open market. It really struck my eye because it was within my budget. It was in a good area in Liverpool. I had done my research, I'd been there, and I felt it was a good opportunity for me to, to take advantage of. So around about January time, I followed up and the tenants had vacated the property and I was able to go up and get a viewing, offered and got rejected. My second offer got accepted. Around about three months into the conveyancing process, I kind of realized that I wasn't getting a good deal. I was basically paying market value for this house. So I realized that I need to go back and renegotiate or I need to just pull out. I went back to the agent and I said to them that I want to pull out the deal. And this was literally just a few days before the end of the day of completion. So the agent came back to me within about 20 minutes and obviously the, the uh, vendor was a little bit gutted that I had done that. Uh, they re-offered me a price. It was about 5,000 less than the 
uh, purchase price, which was already agreed. I said it was too high. It was at that time they also said to me that the vendor was in mortgage difficulties. Then I thought, now is the time to take advantage. So I went back and uh, renegotiated. We ended up on a 70k purchase price. So what you're really saying, you've got a bit of a feel to, for, for, for refurbishing and, and, and improving, adding value and improving. And, and what, I, what I like about uh, you is that you're a true entrepreneur. You've got lots of other things going on, which is great. And you've learned from that first project. This is your second project. Yes. So tell us a bit more about the second project, really in terms of the cost, how much you're spending on it, what are you buying it for and what are you spending on it? This deal had only arisen in the past one and a half weeks. Yep. I was actually going to present a different deal today, but I realised that the vendor... This one's better. This one's better Excellent. and it was more likely to happen. Great. The purchase price hasn't been agreed yet. Right. The reason why is we don't have access to in the inside of the property and I haven't made an offer as of yet. That's good because in a way, because you know, with the experience and, and the advice we can give you now, that can be hopefully negotiated better. So three bedroom semi, the vendor has told me that there is an extension at the rear, um, about three, four meters long. Yep. I think I did uh, take another picture which shows from the side. So what are you going to spend on about 60, 70 grand to refurbish it, something like that? I spoke to a few builders. Yep. Again, it's hard to yep, estimate, yep, yep. but about 90,000. 90 a conservative figure. Okay, that's, that sounds plenty to me. Okay, so you're in probably 400-ish and you, and you think it's worth 500? Yeah. Okay, well that sounds. That sounds. Uh, Paul, do you want to start off and? Yeah, uh, I suppose just you know just stress test some of those numbers. Like how confident are you in that sort of purchase price? Is that based on your discussions to date or? Yeah, so I have spoken with the vendor um, around the price. No uh, offer has been made just of yet because, as I mentioned, for the reasons for the no access and. Um, just a little Sorry, bit. Did you mention why there is no access? After speaking with the vendor, he has told me that there were intruders or people who had gone into the property and changed the locks. Right. So he doesn't have access to. Uh, are they still in the there locks. or are they gone? From what I understand, they have gone so uh, at the moment, and he's recently, in the past few days, uh, consulted with the police to get access to it. You mentioned about you're looking for 100% finance. I assume that would be either cash or a mixture of cash and finance to fund the deal. Yes. Um, I suppose a question on that would be, you've done a deal before. Why is there none of your own cash going in? Because the property that I have just refurbished is on the market uh, this week. I've just put it on the carpets with fit on Monday. Uh, hopefully you're gonna try and sell that within the next well, few weeks. To be fair, Paul, that's why he's here, isn't it? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I, I suppose from my perspective, you know, personally, I'd always want a business partner to have some skin in the game. Otherwise yeah, well, it's too easy to walk away if something goes wrong. Yes, I think it's an excellent find. I just want to probe a little bit how you find, found it, because this is off market, isn't it? This came from your yes. advertising? So uh, I put an advertisement, uh, advertisement on Facebook asking people in within local areas within London, which is West Very London. Very clever, I like that, yeah. Yeah, and I asked them if they, were, if they had or seen any, other, any properties similar to this, so I just took a picture of Google. If you find anything like this, yep. overgrown gardens, broken windows, the worst house you can think of, I'm interested, I'll pay you a thousand pound referral fee and uh, I've got a number of referrals. Um, Fantastic. Have you, you've actually spoken to the seller, you, you get their motivation. So I have met with them twice uh, so far. Uh, the reason I didn't want to discuss the price is really because I felt it wasn't necessary at that stage. I felt it was really just for me to get to know the vendor and yeah. to understand the no, story. I like the tactics, I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Would you be, um, I mean, the, all this stuff with planning for the loft, have you actually considered just um, li literally tidying up, making it into a nice family and bang house? Bang it out. Bang it out really quickly and uh, exiting and moving on. Yes, I have. Uh, however, because we don't have access, I don't know what the interior looks like and I don't know the, the layout. If I was able to have a look and I can see, okay, we can maybe change out a little bit of the, maybe take, take a wall down or it something. It would just be a three bedroom semi. Do it as quick as possible and sell it as quick as possible. For me, this is a turning project. Yeah. You turn it and move on. Yeah. Um, because the opportunity here is, uh, is, is the fact that you've sourced it off market, yep. you've sourced a distressed property, that's where your uplift is coming from. And then it's just turning it round and banging it out as quickly as possible. Clear it out, tidy it all up, make it a bit, make it livable, but not, not spend, you know, spend 5,000 on it, not 40 or 50 or 60, um, and whack it in an auction. It's exactly so what I was thinking as well, uh, but I didn't want to say That came from the seminar as well, I expect. Yeah. Um, I love the area. I've literally just funded a deal very similar to this um, in that area, so it's a great choice. And I love oh. the way you, where your mind thinks kind of outside of the box. Um, 
there's kind of maybe two two things for me that I'm a little I'm a little hesitant on. So skin in the game is one of them with Paul. The reason why I funded the, uh, this previous deal there was because the chap that I work with, it's you know he's got his thing, he's got his patch, and he just and I know and I've seen you know kind of the experience in it. I like your enthusiasm. I like you know you you're, you're very real. Um, maybe a little too inexperienced for me, but could be a great, as, as John and the guys say, could be a really great project for you. I, lo I love things like this that are clearly run down. <laughs> potentially straightforward. Yeah. I think the word potential simple. there simple. is what, what are you going to find when we pull it back? If it is as simple as oh, you worry blaster a few walls. Me. It's, a <laughs> it's a semi. What more do you want? Well, it could it's have like half the walls falling down. 1940, 1950. No, listen, I agree with Nick. It's falling apart, mate. It oh, could be falling apart. You, you, many apart, it's it's worry, you, worry, you worry about crossing the road, some of you, don't you? <laughs> Goodness <laughs> me, come on. We're meant to be entrepreneurs here. You know, we are risk takers to a point, stacked in our favour, but we are risk takers. That's how we've made our money. I love taking risk, and I love the fact, I love the way you found the property. You know, it's, it's very creative. You've gone out there, you've got something off market. I think that's a huge selling point here because you've got time to you know, cut the deal you want. It's a tricky are gonna, one. Are I mean, you going to make an offer or not, Nicholas? Do you um, reckon? I, like, I like the challenge, but it's I'm not sure. It's hardly a challenge. It's a three-bedroom semi. Well, you're right. Compared to some of the sophisticated deals you do, this is like almost, is it too simple for you or something? Can't you see it, the wood from the trees? I know it, uh, by the way, it's all from I mean, the trees. I can understand why you can't see it. I've always wanted a new Literally. shopping trolley. Literally. You know, <laughs> I've, al I've always wanted a new shopping trolley. <laughs> <laughs> so that's tempting, um, but I think you know, it's, it's not one for me, and I'm, I'm trying to find the right reason why not, because it's... So am I. I like the challenge. Um, I think there's just not enough detail. I think, I think if you'd come today having seen inside the property, and you'd got a proper builder's quote, and you knew there was no problems, then I could go, right, these numbers are real. At the moment, it's like this 90 grand could be 150, or it could be 30. Right. And that's the opportunity. I'll let I've John take that opportunity, I think. I'm making you an offer. And the offer is this, I'll give you 25% share of the profit, I'll buy it, we'll show all this lot, if they don't want to make a bid, we'll show, them, we'll show them what a mistake they've made. If we can buy it for 275 or less, I will buy it, give you 25% share of the profit. That's your first offer. Ranjan might better that. I uh, love this, it's bread and butter, I love the way you found it, I love the deal, I think there's a great opportunity here with a quick in and out kind of flip, I think I can... Uh, work with you and we can add some value to this, I think it'll be a lot of fun. So I'm going to give you um, two alternatives. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> subject to it being structurally sound. I don't care about the shopping trolleys, I don't care the graffiti's on the wall. The smellier, the better, you know, that's fine. But structurally, assuming structurally we get it at that range, that's fine. If I put in all the money, then I am looking for a 75% share. If we are funding it with um, things like a bridge and you put in half the thing and I put in half, I'll go in with you 50-50. So option A and option B. But I'd love to work with you. This is bread and butter. I love the, the West London area. Uh, I have a lot of comfort within the M25, as you know, if you've seen my YouTube video. Yeah. <laughs> and I, think this is a, I love the way you found it. It's off market. Just <laughs> for you to understand <laughs> what that would mean from you, that would be about 50 to 60 grand at least from you on the bridge idea. I would have made a, quite a similar offer uh, and uh, I don't think I can beat it. So I'll leave it where it is. You've got a very straightforward off offer from me. Straightforward, no messing. We do need to get in, look at it. You know, the only issue I would say is some of the trees are quite close to the building uh, and they might have gone under the foundations. That would be an issue. But if it is, it's an issue for everyone buying it, in which case the price comes down yeah. accordingly. You've got a similar offer from Ranjan. You will go 50-50. 50-50. If, if you put... 50-50 in on a bridge. On or a if you put 50 grand in is what you're saying, isn't it? All in 75-25. You better decide what you want to do. Take it, not take one, not take the other. Walk away, up to you. Do I have any time to make yeah, a decision? Yeah, please, you've got about a minute. I'd, I'd uh, have, have a, a think about Talk to the picture over talk there. Talk to the picture. <laughs> talk, talk to yourself and come back. Talk to Mountbatten. It's easy or when Kennedy. you've got a partner. <laughs> wonder if the, 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 the YouTube pitch helped you there, Anjan. Oh, I'd be gutted if that helps you. I'll tell you what, <laughs> if I lose this... If I lose oh, this... Lose it again. Pip if again I, on the, on the if YouTube. If I lose this, I'm going home. Yeah. <laughs> Early. Yeah. I'm throwing my toys out of my pram if I lose this. <laughs>
So uh, Ranjan, I just want to say thank you for your offer, but I'm going to have to go with John just for the basis that I wouldn't be able to put up the 50 grand uh, to cover the costs. So John, I'd like to accept your offer if that's okay. Thank you very much. Excellent. Excellent. Did we get a deal? Yes, we did. Fantastic. Tell us what happened. I managed to get two offers, uh, one from Ranjan and one from John. I actually Brilliant. came today to find one joint venture partner and it was, it was nice to see that there was more interest. So how did it end up? So we managed to get exactly what I wanted, a little bit less on the profit split. Okay. But nevertheless, we're still going to go through with the deal, which is what I came here to, today to do. So Excellent. And you get the experience of John as well. Exactly. Brilliant. Well, good luck with the whole process. Thank you, Lizzie. Charlie, welcome to Property Elevator. Thanks for having me. Tell us a little bit about the deal and what you're after today. I'm after an investment of £750,000 uh, for the purchase of land and then construction of nine new residential apartments uh, in Kingston, South West London. And is there anybody in particular that you're looking at investing today or would um, you be happy with any of our angels? I would be happy with any of them, uh, preferably uh, a team effort. I think it's always beneficial to have okay. more than one investor. Okay, uh, great. So you'd like so a couple if possible? If possible. Lovely. All right. Well, good luck. This is a site in Kingston-upon-Thames. Uh, that's what it's going to wow. look like, presuming it's done. How nice is that? Wow, wow. that's, that's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. Really I like that design. Charlie, thank you very much for coming in to see us. Please tell us as much as you can about you briefly and also about what you want funded today. OK, well, the project uh, is called The Furs. It's in Hampton Wick, uh, in Richmond upon Thames Borough. Well, what I'm asking for is £750,000 investment for a 50-50 equity split in the project. It's the new build of nine apartment units. The land itself is clear, it's vacant, stripped, it has planning permission, uh, and it's very much ready to build on. The GDV, as estimated by Savills, was 5.2 million pounds. Uh, I've taken a more conservative view on it based on the local research and, and local knowledge, uh, and I've, I've put it into my figures at 4.9 million. I'm estimating that over 18 months of design and build will split a profit of just over £600,000. In my calculations, I've allowed for the seal costs, there's a stamp duty, an HA fee, Section 106 agreement. I've included for our disposal costs of the units uh, in stamp and legal fees, and it will leave us, as I said, to split £600,000. Uh, 600, the location of the flats is, I can't stress enough, it's, it's second to none. Uh, we're on the border of Bushy Park, which for those who don't know is the second largest park in London. We're a 30 second walk from the River Thames. There are local rowing clubs, yachting. It's 500 metres from a local train station, which is Hampton Wick. I grew up in the area. Uh, it's, it's local to me. I went to school about five to ten minutes walk away from the site. I used to cycle past it every day uh, on my way to college. Uh, my best friend's dad had a construction company and we used to do uh, small residential conversions, extensions. I then went to college, I did a BTEC in construction. I got a degree in construction. I worked in, uh, in the States for a year in Arizona. I was building a $5 billion semiconductor plant for Intel. I came back to the UK uh, and I've been working for some of the largest developers uh, and most prestigious developers in the country. I recently finished a 49 unit development uh, in St John's Wood about three, four years ago. I finished a development just down the road from this one uh, on the other side of the river. It was 350 units for the Berkeley Group. I own a property uh, in Twickenham as well, which I'm, I'm happy to give a second charge on for yourselves as, as a bit of security. I welcome any questions on the, on the project, myself, uh, anything else you, um, you care to thank ask. You, thank you, Charlie. Um, your backstory is is excellent and clearly you know exactly what you're talking about which thank is uh, refreshing so um, thank you very much for coming today to have someone of your quality and your experience and your qualifications is great it's great for the show and it's great for us as investors as well uh, have you got an offer on the the debt finance at the moment from a bank uh, not from a bank from a broker he's, he's agreed that we'd need 750k equity uh, and they would put in the rest. And is that that three million? Is that including the purchase price? So it's a land and then development loans. So yes. Two phase. Yeah. Okay. Are there any PGs on that? Uh, Personal guarantees. So, um, they haven't said anything about it. 
think there will be. I there will be. Worth, I, worth I, double I, checking. I, I, expect, I expect there will be, but that's not necessarily a problem. So don't worry. Standard. Have, yeah. have you got an application in principle on you as a? Um, no. Okay. No. I th that would definitely be something to do, depending on how much you've done in your own name before. Mm -hmm. You know, you've done a lot for other people, but getting this level of finance as you know first, second, third deal mm -hmm. would be. But Nicholas, that's why it's challenging. Here. I understand that. Okay. So you would want us, just clarify if that's why he's here, you want the money, but do you want us as a shareholder in an SPV so that we go yes. on the finance yep. with you? 50 yes, 50-50, you said. Yeah. Okay. And, and just on the, the second charge you've offered, yep. what's the value of that property and what, what equity is in it? So um, my current equity is £50,000 in the property. After the renovations are finished, which should be in three to four months, that will rise to between two hundred and two hundred and twenty thousand. and 220000 Okay, right. thank you. How many units is it? It's nine units, so it's six one beds and three two beds. And they're quite sizable units. The penthouse itself is a two bed, but it's 100 metres squared. And what's, the, what's about the average values for the one beds and the two beds? It must have been about 760 pounds a square foot. Each one is, is circa 750 square foot. It must be between five so and 700,000. So yeah, they're big one bedders, aren't they? Are you used to a planning consultant on this? Or? Uh, no, no, it wasn't me that, that got planning. It it's already got planning before you've, yes. before you've got involved. Okay, and have you agreed the deal in principle? No, not with the owners of the land. Because no, I but it's available and we can jump in, on, we can jump all over it Monday if we want. Yes. Great, okay. And, and it's on for the 1.85, is it? Or that's yes. what you think you get it for? It's on for 1.85. Um, I spoke to the agent, they had a couple of low ball offers. And those were refused, I guess? Yes. What were the offers, do you know? Uh, they, they didn't divulge. Oh, okay. They just said they were, they were too low. One way or the other, you can normally find out, because that's really important. Knowledge is power, and to know what someone else has bid and it's been refused, you know, gives you an indication it might be. You might have been able to come in here for and say, look, I think I can get it for 1.75 because I think they turned down 1.725, or whatever it might be. It seems that the sizes that you've described for each unit are over the London plan minimum. And I wonder, because most developers would seek to get the, you know, just, just do the London plan for the one bed, the London plan for the two beds. Because the, the current owners have not managed to get the density they require for the site, I wonder whether that's the reason why they're selling it on. And I wonder why, whether that is actually one of the reasons why the profitability is, is, is not as high as I'd expect from a site in this location. Maybe the person that's put this planning application in just asked the architect to whack a planning application in, yeah. you know, to get planning in order to sell it and hasn't to put a lot of effort into it. But that's what you need to know because then you know there's a better angle. You know there's an angle then where you can improve the planning. You could have then come into us today and said, look, at the moment it's this, but I'm going to turn it into this and if I do this, it's going to be worth that much more money. And I've spoken to the planners and the planners in principle are happy with it. That's what we needed to hear. be a huge opportunity here by the, the landowner just saying to the architect well, whack in a, a reasonable plan that's what that's what we need to know uh, and the architect hasn't got any decent brief from a exactly. trained developer yeah. they've, just, they've yeah. just used their ego and yeah use their usual nice. one i love the idea as a part nearby because people realize there needs to be an open space they have a lockdown and covid in the future who knows people are you know any 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 site development near a big park it, I think is is a real bonus and i think going forward it will continue to be a bonus for me at the moment there's just not enough profit in it. If it goes wrong, the market drops a little bit or whatever, we, you and I are going to be underwater. You're not going to have anywhere to live because I'm going to take that off you, yeah? Because we're going to be underwater. And if I don't take it off you, the bank will. I would have been very interested in this deal, very interested, if you'd come in and said, this is that there's an uplift here, uplift there. I've spoke to them, spoke to them. And by the way, you know, it's a million profit, not 600. Then if something goes wrong, I like to think I can still make 500 grand out of it. To put the figures that I'm looking at on that, the 600 grand profit on your GDV of 4.9 is 12% return on GDV, 14% return on cost. It's very tight. I don't think it's beyond the realms of expectation that we see a 10% or more dip in prices, particularly on a time frame of 18 months. And it's 18 months, you, you think that's to build or you imagine that it, they would be sold in that time as well? To sell as well. Oh, to I, sell as well, okay. I, I would always leave a, a, year, a year to sell them. Year to build, year to sell is how I would look at that. And I think, Helen, you mentioned it earlier with, with someone else, that the same thing. Yeah, exactly. 
I've got stuff that I was told was going to be <laughs> was going to be done in kind of 12, 18 months, four years on. Yeah, still. Anyway, let's not go there. So, <laughs> I think you need to consider the exit on these as well, especially with the current planning. Um, you know, I've got, I've got quite a lot of experience in the sale of properties off plan, and these wouldn't sell off plan because they're not really investment stock. Their, their owner occupier stock. Do you know stock. what, Paul? Some people do like to live, own and live in a property. No, they don't always want to bloody no, that, buy the that's, if you buy to let my point obsession with <laughs> buy to let. I, I think these are owner occupier stock. Totally, yes. Um, the, the yields on them won't be great. No tenants in there, great. And, and, and owner occupiers don't really buy off plan. I yep. would agree that yep. you want to account for yep. six to 12 months to sell them once they're yep. done. And that drags this deal out quite a bit and just eats too much into that 12% margin. The, the, the one other thing you have to remember, when you're building or converting a flat or a block of flats, you have to get it all finished before you can sell one. Even if you get people who exchange contracts with you prior, no one is going to give you the full amount of money until they have a completion certificate in their hand. You cannot get a part completion certificate for a block of eight flats, nine flats. You have to get it totally finished, which means all your money's out before you get any in. So it's not like, it's not, as you know, it's not like, you know, a housing estate where you can build 10 and you've got another 20 left to go and you can phase it, you can't phase it. So unfortunately, on this occasion, I won't invest. However, I want you to keep in touch with me because you're bright, you're intelligent, you know what you're doing. All you need to do is come up with a slightly better deal mm -hmm. and I will definitely like to think I would invest in you. Okay. So I'm out. I'd back up what John said that it's very clear, like you clearly completely on top of the numbers here. And I like, I, you know, I like, like you've rounded down from what the estate agent said. So the, that conservative, that re realism that you've brought to it is very reassuring. I agree with what Ranjan said that actually the value in this is, is would have been the planning and that's the juicier part of the deal. But at those return on GDVs in this market, it's just too tight for me, so it's not for me this time. Thank you. I love the look of the site. I love the location. I think you're highly investable. I think you're going to go on and do great things in property off your own back rather than working for someone else. You've got that background, that education, that knowledge to then go and turn that into practical use. So that's, that's exciting for you. Um, I'm not a home builder. I'm an investment builder. I like to build investment buildings that create huge yield. I don't want to build someone's high luxury home anywhere. Um, so it's unfortunately not the deal for me, um, but I think you'll do very well. And um, you know, good luck with this one if you, if you get it done um, or your future. Uh, I'm not really going to sort of add anything. I think you're a great entrepreneur. This is just the wrong deal for me. And just to echo what the guys said, I think, I think we would all feel comfortable JVing with someone like you. And you're the type of person we would want to be overseeing a project like this. But just this particular project, the way it's set up, the margin just isn't good enough. Charlie, thank you very much for coming today. And I, I'm sure, I wish you all the very best because I'm sure you'll be very successful. And please keep in touch because I think uh, we may well be doing something together in the future if, if we can. Thanks a lot. Thank, thank, you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So Charlie, tell me how it went. It didn't go well because I, I didn't get the investment, but other than that, it, it went well. Um, they liked the opportunity, but it just didn't have the margin. Right, them. okay, so just a little bit too small a profit. Yes. Yeah. Right, okay, so what's your next steps then with the deal? The next step is to go back to the vendor uh, and see if I can get a better price on the land. Okay. Um, and hopefully make it stack up a little bit better for them. Okay, and what then you'll be back in touch hopefully. with them? They've yes. said to keep in touch? Just say keep in touch uh, and I plan to do so. So Christina, welcome to the show. It's great having you here. Thank you very much. I'm delighted to be here. Tell us a little bit about your deal and what you're after today. I already own a site in Central Coventry. It was originally a restaurant okay. and um, I'm in the process of demolishing it. Um, I'm, I've got full planning consent to build 18 apartments above a commercial unit um, and I require the funding to help me do that. Fantastic. Um, it is the biggest project I've done to date, mm -hmm. so uh, that's the reason that I think I'm going to get the best value out of um, using one of the angels to, um, to help me do that. Because yeah, with their experience absolutely. and track record. Yeah. yeah. Well, good luck. Thank you. I've got my fingers crossed for you. Thank you. I'll have a little chat to you when you get out. Christina would like us to invest in Coventry, which uh, I was there recently speaking at Coventry University and actually I was very impressed with the city. It's come a long way and the university is right in the centre and this is close by I think and it's a demolition 
and, and, re and um, rebuild. I feel like I'm doing a job for her. Shall we uh, get her in? Hi Christina, thank you very much for coming in today. Have you come all the way from Coventry or? I have today, yes I have, because I've been on site today. Do tell us a bit about yourself and about the development you'd like us to try and fund for you. Myself, I am um, a property developer. I've been a property developer for the last two years full time. I am I'll probably describe myself as a, um, a creative and very resilient individual. I've seen some ups and downs in, the, um, in my time with property. Um, and I do have a blend of uh, strategic, operational um, and technical skills. I have a uh, technologies background and Correct. that was what I did as a career. So today I'm here to um, offer you the opportunity to well, work with me on a project that, um, as you have seen from the pictures, has already started. I, I went through the process with my uh, wife. We bought the site um, from a gentleman who wanted to retire. And um, having bought the site, then took it through the planning consent process, got full planning for 18 apartments above a commercial unit. Having got the consent, then went through the process of having the um, demolition um, at least started. It's due to complete around the um, 7th of September. I set about thinking uh, uh, about how to, to fund the project. Um, and I realised that because it's my largest project and um, possibly because there's a slight complexity in that we, we bought the property um, in our CUROPS pension, so I offshored our pensions, we consolidated them and bought the um, site into that pension fund. So I felt that the, the standard debt model might be a little bit more challenging because of that, um, and also because I don't have demonstrable experience of projects of this size. So having um, purchased this and spent money on it, we've um, invested so far uh, a million pounds, approximately. And I'm looking today for two million pounds worth of development funding to enable us to complete that um, with a calculated GDV of um, 3.8 million upwards. Um, I believe it represents a, um, a good deal to um, one or more of you to assist in, um, in, in creating that product for me. Our intention is to create it as serviced accommodation um, with a full planning consent is for sui generis on that basis and um, each, of the, um, each of the apartments is totally self-contained. I'm unsure at the moment what we do with the commercial unit and I'm also a little bit more flexible. It doesn't have to be that. The site actually sits on the cusp of, almost in the heart of, a £350 million regeneration scheme which went to public consultation um, completed last month, um, is expected to go for full planning in September with the expectation of a decision Q1 next year and then beyond that there will be um, developers on site. So I see that as a huge opportunity for service accommodation to have um, a much higher demand for um, mm. uh, people needing to be very close to that site for, um, for quite a period of time. Why did you buy it in the first place? The commercial agent who, um, uh, who introduced me to this yep. uh, was the gentleman that sold me the HMO. Ah, uh, right, yep. Um, and I'd, um, I'd approached them regarding a number of uh, HMO possibilities they'd had um, and he came to me and said, would you be interested? Yep. Was it on the market or? It wasn't on the market at the time. The, okay. um, the owner was a personal Retire. friend of his. Okay, excellent. That's the first question. Have they said, are there any grants available potentially for your development, if it, if it happens? It's a very good question, actually, not for my development. But they're, they've um, already announced um, a £100 million grant for the um, larger development. Um, I have to say I've not approached okay. them well, for a grant for the development. That's something I didn't know that, that I would definitely look into. So the 3.8 million GDV, that's based upon a commercial valuation for the service accommodation rent, is that right? It is, um, and it's based on uh, an assumed occupancy of um, 70% um, and uh, a yield of 6.5%. So I was trying to sort of keep that um, more realistic. Do you know what the bricks and mortar valuation would be as opposed to the commercial valuation? I calculated £175,000 per unit uh, um, and circa half a million pounds for the commercial unit. The GDV is 3.8, okay. 3.8. Yeah. But that, that's assuming 6.5% yield on the, on, the, on the commercial. That's right. Uh, and um, rent of 38 grand or something. Uh, yeah. I mean, I've, I've done my research on the commercial um, uh, yields 
uh, and what I wanted to do was just to make it work um, at what I thought was a more conservative level. I think that's probably, I mean, I obviously don't quite know where it is um, in Coventry, but I think that's probably a bit strong, unless you manage to get a, a, um, a national covenant, a good national covenant. I think any yield is probably like to be 8% to, for, to a, lo a lo more local covenant in there. But you might get lucky, you might get a you know, Tesco's, 24-hour Tesco's or whatever, in which case it would be lower than that. So yeah, yeah. You know, it's difficult to pitch, I do appreciate that. How close is it to the university, please? Five-minute walk. Five-minute walk, OK. To Coventry University. Just on the GDV at 6.5%, that, that's on all of the service accommodation as well, is it? That is, yes. Yeah, I think that is, that is quite strong then f for another operator coming in. Have you any experience of service accommodation? Why, why did you go that route with the planning and not just C3 apartments? So I mentioned that, um, that we purchased the um, property in the pension. Yeah. You can only do commercial development uh, okay. through the pension. Yeah, um, you know, the, the idea is to, um, to develop it and to hold it and to operate. Um, and clearly one of the reasons that I'm here today is that um, I would like to be able to work with somebody who has got serviced accommodation experience oh. to, to help me with that. Um, Interesting. I've run a number of service accommodation blocks. I thought he was going to soon mention that, yeah. I think what you need to do is to go and find an operator to sign a pre-lease before you do anything more. Because if you've got an operator yeah. that's going to guarantee your income, it'll guarantee your valuation, it'll guarantee your finance, mm. it'll make the whole process a lot easier. If you go and build this with no operator, you're going to be really stuck if you can't find an operator. And why you, and you why won't can't really you operate it yourself? I hadn't intended actually taking a full-time job of operating. So you might be looking for an operator as well, potentially. Yeah. Okay, that's good to know. We, w we want to know why you're here. Very interesting. What you need. I like the service accommodation model. We were talking about it before. I have just, I've uh, set up a service accommodation business and I, I do like it. Just out of interest, with the Curops um, pension, so you bought it in your crops, you offshored the pension and then bought it in that structure, is that right? That's right. So um, uh, I looked into it and um, basically we consolidated, um, Liz and myself, we consolidated our pensions into um, uh, this qualified recognised offshore pension scheme. Um, it's based in Malta um, and... <laughs> oh, <laughs> fancy that. <laughs> my, can, my part of the world. In, in some respects, it was a very good um, model for, um, for developers because you have the, um, the governance of your pension trustees who've got your interests to look after. Um, and uh, so I had to pitch the project to them, present the business plan, um, before they would agree to uh, to fund the project, and then it was fairly straightforward beyond that. Did you assess that against the SAS model? Um, the SAS model? So far as, as establishing a, a small admit self-administered scheme and lending the money out? Going offshore had a number of other distinct advantages okay. because um, you have lifetime limits in the UK, so when you take it offshore, those lifetime limits are there, um, eliminated. Um, and um, the, the other main one is that um, if either of us passed away, um, the, the balance of the cure ops goes to one or the other without any tax implications, inheritance tax. And they take a first charge over the property, I assume? No, they don't take first charge, they own the property, so they are the shareholders. It's the SAS model that you need to take a charge. Which means that for funding, you know, whoever is um, putting up the uh, development funds, they can take a first charge on it. I may not be your obvious partner, when you look around the room. However, I have just delivered £27 million worth of development in Ipswich, on time and on budget. I have a partner who's very bright, much brighter than me, and I think he would be, and I would be, together we would be very interested in this. Um, maybe not exactly how you see it now, maybe slightly differently, but if it would be slightly differently, it, it would be to your advantage. Okay. So I'm open to that. I would be very interested in doing something with you, but I'm just going to think about it for a minute while one or two others say what they think, if I may. If you can get a first charge on the building, have you explored any other standard development finance? Um, I had conversations with some of the funders that I've used already, yeah. um, including some that aren't, if you like, the mainstream banks and so on. Um, I've, I've got quite a lot of commercial experience. I've executed a couple of option agreements and in the past few years, and uh, there's a few that have failed and not worked at all. Um, so I, I kind of I can work my way around any kind of structure of deal. 
um, I'm comfortable in that space and I'd be very happy to work with um, somebody who's got more experience and help that can, can help. I suppose present some of the possibilities that, that just aren't in my head because no, I, I don't I, have I, that. I, and I can see that. And I've, there's, a, there's something that I'm, I'm just mulling over, which I think um, might be more beneficial to us both. I think you need to find a way of financing this, buying out the pension, so you've got full flexibility to rejig the units out of sui generis. I think that would add a huge planning gain, personally. Um, so, so I, I could switch. Um, I, I don't have to take it out of the pension to switch it from sui generis. Um, uh, that's, that's not the issue. It just means that I can't keep them and let them keep out. Them I would them, have yeah. to okay. sell them. That's still a commercial activity. Yeah. Um, I don't know what that does to the VAT, though. Does that? I'll just kind of state where I am. Um, I was looking at kind of the 20% return on, on, on capital over the two years, and that wasn't particularly where I'd be looking, but I didn't realise it was first charge. Um, basis, which does make a big difference in terms of the, re the return I expect for the security. They're very much interlinked for me. Um, however, I'm not a serviced accommodation expert. I've got no desire to become one, so I don't think I'm the right person for this deal, but it's very exciting. I love the, I love the um, centrality of, of the location, and I think you're going to be spoiled for choice here, so best of luck with that. Ranjan, would you have you got something to say? You're being very quiet, for you, especially for you. Very suspicious, Christina. When Ranjan's quiet, he's thinking very seriously. Could be good, could be bad. We don't know. I love the centrality of the location. I mean, uh, my geography outside the N25 is very poor, but I, I operate. Never. I operate by a simple postcode theory where if it if it has a, a two letters and a one, then that's the centre of town, wherever it is. What is the exit? the investor or are you looking for the investor to basically stay in uh, well, I, th I think I think that depends because I, I, I am open to an alternative deal structure and variation on um, what we uh, execute based on somebody else's experience there's an obvious exit if it's um, if it's a build and sale can I just drill down to your bill costs you've got sort of you know one line 1.5 million plus the prelims at, at half a million is that as much detail as you've gone into? I'm hoping there's no, no, um, some serious research. No, no, I've got a full, full team on it. I've got a quantity surveyor. I, I'm just giving you the potted highlights. So, uh, you know, I've got a very long set of detail, and um, the calculations in the summary give me the um, price per square foot. That's what I've used um, there, you know, to provide you with that information. Was it an archaeological dig that's required? The only possibility is um, if we have to do anything if there's a likelihood or possibility that there's any um, UXB or anything on it we had a desktop survey there's a possibility we may have to once we get the um, down to the bottom slab to actually do a couple of um, drill holes to see okay well I'm right I'm ready to make you an offer subject to a couple of things because of course on a deal of this size, you know, it, it, the devil is in the detail, Christina. You must appre I hope you appreciate that. And whatever I say is subject to further due diligence on, 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 on the deal itself because I need to look at it, analyse it and so on. But in principle, I would like to offer you the money you're looking for and I would like to take 60% of the deal, not the 50%, 50-50 that you're looking at. You've put your money in. You don't need to put any more money in at all. We will put the rest in. We will develop it to the best of our ability, be it flats, be it service accommodation, whatever we, we agree together, what we think is the best outcome. That's my offer. Thank you. I don't like the idea of finding an archaeological dig site and whatnot, although that could be mitigated <coughs> with a bit of time. <coughs> That's the chicken um, noise, by the way, I'm making. I think, I think John would be an excellent partner for you, and I think that's an extremely generous offer, which I couldn't beat. Um, so, unfortunately, on that basis, um, I won't be investing, but good luck. It's an, an exci incredibly exciting site. As I say, I like the service accommodation model. I like how central it is. John will probably yeah, make the buck, buck, buck noise again for me, but I, I like central locations close to big cities, and, and I think this ticks that box. It's not necessarily a massive city, but given its centrality and what's going on, I think that works. Uh, again, I think it's a very good offer by John, though, and, and, I, th and I also think that John could probably add more value to the deal for you than I could. I like the so I like the end use. I think he can probably add more value to you to get it there. So I'll I'll, I'll count myself out. But when it's done, let me know because we might operate it for you. 
It's very well thought out. Um, it's very exciting, but it's not really my bag. But I think John has made you a great offer. Thank you. Um, I would like to accept that offer. Thank you very much. OK, so looking at the smile, it looks like we got a deal. We did. Fantastic. Um, John made an offer and um, it was an offer I couldn't refuse. It's, um, with a pedigree like his, um, I'm really looking forward to working with him. Oh, that's brilliant. I'm so, so happy for you. So what are the next steps? Well, he says we'll start on Monday. Oh, so, well, <laughs> nothing like the present, I wait, hey? <laughs> I, I, wait, I wait to see. Uh, of course, we've got um, you know to finish the demolition, which is just a matter of a few weeks away now. Okay. Um, and uh, we, we're going to have to sit down and look at those, uh, look at the plans. He seems to think he's got some ideas where we could get more value out of it. So I'm really excited to find out what that is. Brilliant. Uh, with his experience, that's what I was hoping for out of that sort of relationship. Great. So a great result. Brilliant result. Thank so you. happy for you. Yeah. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> and uh, thank you for you know staying behind and um, and hearing me today. It's been uh, it's been a pleasure. Wow! Another great day of deals and a lot of very happy angels and property developers. As always, not all the deals could be taken over the line today, but we hope that those who didn't make it have gone away with some great feedback and hopefully that little bit more confidence to make that next deal work. I'm Elizabeth Warburton and you've been watching Property Elevator.